All right, welcome back. I have got my hat hat on, which is one of my favorite hats. And I'm also gonna share something else that Mr. Lantrip used to say. Um, but before we do that, we've got to figure out um, how to solve two-step equations. So what do I mean by solving an equation? When I say to solve an equation, what does that mean? What's a solution? So a solution is simple. It's just a value that makes the equation true. That's all it is. So let's look at this equation. Two times x plus three equals 15. There's got to be a number that we could put in for x so that the left side, two times x plus three, had the same value as the right side, 15. So which of these values is a solution? Uh, is it, could it be three, four, five, six? I'll go ahead and tell you it's one of them. And well, we can just try it out. So what about two times three plus three? Well, two times three is six plus three, that's nine. Nope, that's not a solution. Okay, so let's go back. And instead of trying three, let's try four. Two times four is eight plus three. That's 11, nope, so that doesn't work. What about five? Two times five is 10 plus three, nope. Well, now let's try the last option that I gave you. Two times six plus three. Two times six is 12 plus three is 15. Okay, so six. Six is our solution. And the reason I can tell that is when I substitute it in for the variable, when I substitute the six in for the variable, the equation is true. I'm gonna say that one more time. Six is the solution because when I substitute for the variable, the equation is true. When I put that six in for X, the equation is true. And I just proved it right there. And that should go in your notes, right? So I'm sure you're writing that down. Pause it if you need to. All right, so now we know what a solution is. It's just the number that makes the equation true. Let's do a quick detour. Let's talk about something called inverse operations. Now, this is something you probably know, but I'm just giving you a name for it, okay? Every option, <clears throat> sorry, every operation has an inverse operation, which is an operation that has the opposite effect. And you can easily remember them because they are the levels of our Jimdas house of operations. So addition and subtraction are inverse operations, okay? I'll give you an example. If I do 10 uh, plus seven minus seven, what happens? Well, 10 plus seven, I go up to 17, and then minus seven, I go back to 10. So if I add seven and subtract seven, they undo each other, right? They're inverse operations, okay? The same thing is true of multiplication and division. Okay, so let's take um, a really simple problem like um, five times two divided by two. Well, let's see, five times two is 10. And then 10 divided by two, we go back down to five. So you see, if we multiply by two and then divide by two, we get back where we were going. And this is also true, by the way, um, if we do it in the other order. So let's say I do 20 divided by four, 20 divided by four is five. And then I multiply that times four. Well, I'm gonna get back to 20. So in the same way, dividing by four and multiplying by four undo each other, okay? And so we call that inverse operations. All right, so let's talk about how to solve equations. And here is where I'm getting, I'm going to share what Mr. Lantrip used to say, which is right before he said the most important thing of the lesson, he would say, now hear this, now hear this, now hear this. And you knew you really had to pay attention when he said that. He would say, now hear this, now hear this, now hear this. So I want y'all to really focus on here. How do we find out the solution to an equation? It means to find the solution for the variable. There's two steps. The first step is we're going to make a list of the operations happening to the variable. So what I mean is X right now, as you can see over here, is not by itself, okay? There's stuff happening to X. What is happening to X? It's getting turned into the number 15. 
like X doesn't equal 15. It's after we like multiply and add that it becomes 15. So let's make a list of the operations happening to X. Okay, so here's my list. Um, I always start by writing the variable and I write what's happening to it in the order of operations. So if I put a number in here for X, what would be the first thing I do to it? I would multiply it times two, right? Because multiplication comes before addition in the order of operations. Well, then the last thing I would do after I multiplied times two is I would add three, okay? So now I have done this first step. I've made a list of the operations happening to the variable times two plus three, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo those operations in reverse order. And how do I undo an operation? Well, I use the inverse operation. So if I was adding, I would subtract because that's the opposite operation. If I was multiplying, I would divide. So think about it this way. X gets multiplied by two, then added by three, and that's what equals 15. So the last thing that happened was getting added by three. So that's what we're going to undo first. We start at the bottom of the list and we need to undo this first. So I'm going to do minus three from both sides of the equation. Now this is really important. You must do the same thing to both sides of the equation. Why is that? Well, an equation is a balance, right? There's an equal sign and it's two expressions that have the same weight, the same value. And if I remove three pounds from one side and I don't remove it from the other, all of a sudden I'm out of bounds. So if I remove three pounds from this side, I gotta remove three pounds from the other side. Then I rewrite my equation. So I bring down my equal sign and I write 15 minus three, that's 12. Two X plus three minus three. Okay, those kind of undo each other. So I just have two X. All right, so now I have undone the plus three. Now, what do I need to do? I need to undo the times two. Right, because that's what's happening to X. X is getting multiplied by two and it equals 12. How do I undo multiplying? What's the inverse operation? Well, the inverse operation, the opposite of multiplication is division. So we're going to divide by two. And we divide by two on both sides because we always do the same thing to both sides. And then I write, bring down my equal sign and I write 12 divided by two is six and two X divided by two, well, X is getting multiplied by two and then divided by two. Those undo each other. They sort of divide away like a common factor and we're left with X. And remember, X is the solution to this equation from earlier, right? Two X plus three equaled 15. So what did I do here? I made a list of the operations happening to the variable. Then I undid them in reverse order. And so I undid the plus three, then I undid the times two, and I ended up with X, which was six. Let's do that one more time. Okay, and just as a reminder, whenever you do something in these equations, you must do it the same thing to both sides of the equation to keep it balanced. All right, so let's start by making a list of the operations. What is happening to Y here? Well, Y doesn't equal four, but if we divide it and then subtract it, it does. So I'm gonna write Y is getting divided by three and then it's getting subtracted by eight. And that's what turns it into the number four. So let's undo those things. Um, well, we need to go in reverse order. So how do I undo minus eight? Well, I'm going to use the inverse operation, which is plus eight. Um, so I'm going to add eight on this side of the equal sign and add eight on this side of the equal sign. You can even, if you want, draw um, a line down here to make sure that you're doing the same thing on both sides. A lot of people find that helpful. Um, now I just bring down my equal sign and I rewrite the problem. Y divided by three minus eight plus eight. Well, these are going to add to zero. So I basically just have Y divided by three on this side. And on the other side, I have four plus eight, that's 12. Okay, so I have now undone the minus three with, or the minus eight with the plus eight. Now I need to undo divide by three. How do you undo division? What's the inverse operation for division? Well, it's multiplication. The opposite of dividing by three is multiplying by three. So I'm going to multiply both sides by three. Okay, and then I bring down my equal sign 
And let's see, y divided by three is getting multiplied by three times three and divided by three, those undo each other. So I just get y here and 12 times three is 36. And if you're ever curious, like, how do I check that I didn't make a mistake? You can always go back and put the 36 back into the original problem. And you could write 36 divided by three minus eight. 36 divided by three is 12 minus eight is four. And the sound of my daughter crying is a good sign that it's time for me to sign off. So remember to send me an email with what Mr. Lantrip said.